for Children and Youth Environmental Human Rights Defenders. This session comes at a vital juncture among our discussions for day two, reminding us to consider the intergenerational aspects of environmental protection, as it is our responsibility to protect the environment for both present and future generations. I'm Surbhi Vanalia, intern at OHCHR Southeast Asia, and I'm your moderator for today. It is now my pleasure to invite speakers from Child Rights Connect who will be sharing their experiences. Child Rights Connect is the world's largest NGO network that focuses specifically on empowering children's rights defenders by enabling them to engage with the UN human rights system. Please take the floor. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Melaya, and I am part of the child Children Advisory Team under Child Rights Connect. My presentation will cover a child-friendly guide on the rights of child human rights defenders that Child Rights Connect and the Children Advisory Team have helped put together and how we can help children in such activities that evolve around the happenings and care of our environment. To begin with, I would first off like to share my thoughts as a child on the environment in general. The environment is basically everything around me, my surroundings and my home. There are so much things happening in the world today that is hurting the earth that most significant being the impacts of climate change. People of the Pacific have been experiencing these fast effects of climate change. Sea levels rising, coral bleaching, global warming, extreme climatic conditions such as droughts and so forth. This is a serious, serious issue as it brings about the concept of the earth slowly dying. It is saddening as we children become aware that such things are happening to our home, thus leaving us a much rather unsafe and unhealthy future for children of today and for the next generations to come, which has now developed into a great concern to many children, thus pushing many concerned young people to speak up for the environment. This is where the child-friendly guide of the child human rights defenders come in as it assists and gives children more reasons and motivation to use their rights as human rights defenders to be able to think, express, and speak on their concerns, particularly speak on their concerns, particularly their concerns for the environment. This guide basically consists of who child human rights defenders are, what kind of challenges do they face, and what rights do they have. It also consists of the four general principles, inclusive of what is happening in relation to particular rights and what problems children may encounter when defending these rights. It also includes what strategies and policies are needed to be carried out and established in order to rectify such problems experienced by children who defend child human rights. This guide does not only focus on minors, but it also focuses on their parents and guardians and even the government in reference to the roles they play amongst these children and how they can help carry them carry out their roles more freely, confidently and truthfully as human rights defenders without experiencing any sort of suppression from other principles to do so. The child advisory team has been working on this guide by putting in ideas on how to make the document more comprehensive, user-friendly and easy to understand for children around the world in the hopes of empowering them to speak and defend their rights. You could just imagine if more children were knowledgeable of their own rights and how they can be protected and feel safe when defending these rights, the world would be able to listen to the very thoughts of their future leaders and their concerns for the many things happening around the globe, particularly their concerns for climate change and their thoughts on how they would like to contribute to combat such global issues, especially when the environment is included, as it yet again evolves around the care for their future. I feel that this guide would, be, would greatly be of aid to many children, especially the children of the Pacific, who are experiencing the worst and drastic effects of climate change and are yearning to take action by bringing about activities that derives from awareness for, for the environment. This would empower and push Oceania children to speak louder, 
and form a com combined voice of the future of the Pacific to the rest of the world on how we are facing the disastrous effects of climate change and how human activities are slowly deteriorating the life of our planet. I have always been aware of climate change and its various streams. Thus, having the opportunity to be able to speak from my perspective at such an event that is focusing on environmental issues is of utmost importance to me, as I can be able to give my views on environmental issues and what I as a child would like to see amongst other children. On another note, I would just like to bring to notice the normal of today and its effect on the mindsets of our children. What I mean by this is basically the state of the environment today, inclusive of the mass complications that climate change has caused and how this has become the normal or average state of the environment of children born in this era. Likewise, for the other young people compared to the older generation and their concept of the normal state of the environment in reference to the average global temperature, species counts, conditions of carbon sinks, and so forth from earlier decades compared to now. The earth is constantly being harmed, thus climate change is gradu gradually increasing, therefore deteriorating the current conditions of the environment thus embedding into the mindset of children of the next generation that the poor state of our home planet is normal. The gist of this is basically to give awareness that yet again, the earth is dying and it should not be acceptable that the future generations have to live their lives in this planet, thinking that the end results of our activities on the earth is normal or at least better than what it could be further on. People need to understand that it is quite unfair and not very just of us to have to leave our home planet to the future generations in such a way, in such a state where they would think it is much better, better in their current times than how it would be for the later generations and so forth. This would bring about a greedy and selfish cycle towards of course the earth and its people. This is why it is vital to educate people, particularly children, the future leaders on such topics, so that such problems can be avoided or at least minimized. To conclude, I would like to end with what I would like to see more, and that is for more children to be exposed to, first and foremost, environmental education, and secondly, the rights of children made known to them to further help them in any and many activities that they would love to carry out and, and upbring in accordance to their various perceptions on various issues, even at a global level. Adding on to that, I would just like to say that the child advisory team have been uh, finalizing the document and we would love to share it with you once it's finalized. Thank you. Thank you, Malaya, for sharing your um, for sharing such actionable points and your work on um, supporting children and youth activists, as well as for highlighting the consequences of environmental degradation on the youth. I would, it is now my pleasure to invite Lavitana Lagi Seru or Langi to take the floor. Lagi, Langi is a climate justice activist and has a background in youth development, gender, human rights, and sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sex characteristics inclusion in disaster risk reduction and humanitarian action. He is currently the climate justice project officer for the Pacific Islands Climate Action Network, the regional umbrella body for civil society organizations working on climate change in the Pacific. Langi is also the co-founder and coordinator of the Alliance for Future Generations, Fiji, a young people-led network on sustainable development and holds the role as vice chair of the 2021 United Nations Food System Summit and Track 3. So um, handing over to you now, Langi. Good morning uh, to everyone. I'm joining you all here from uh, Nandi in, in Fiji. So I just want to touch on what the previous speaker had, had talked about, uh, about environmental, the forms of 
environmental injustices that we are experiencing, that we are facing here in the Pacific, one of which is oceans. We just recently uh, marked the World Oceans Day uh, a few, uh, about a week ago. And uh, also we, there was a recent uh, regional discussion on, on deep sea mining. So these are some of the challenging issues around environment that the Pacific has had to, to grapple on, uh, with on top of uh, climate change, which has also been recognized as the single greatest threat to the livelihoods, the security and well-being of the people of the Pacific. And so when you look at oceans, at extractivism of minerals, uh, deep sea mining, and other forms of environmental uh, issues, including uh, pollution. These are all rooted in, uh, uh, and you know, are rooted in an economic model that continues to uh, promote profit making in today's hyper globalized economies, whilst damaging ecosystems, people, and planet. And we know that this has been well established by science. Uh, in the case of climate change, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the projected potential impacts and associated risk include and, not un and are not limited to increasing mean temperature in most land and ocean regions, global mean sea level rise, impacts on biodiversity and ecosystem, including species loss and extinction, and increases to health, climate, uh, and also environmental related risks to health, to livelihoods, food security, water supply, and economic growth. Now, this environmental crisis will become more acute for current and future generation, especially in the Pacific, where at least half of the population is under 23 years of age. Not only will it compound some of the existing development challenges for the Pacific, but it will put pressure on many individuals and communities who are already struggling for access to natural resources, increasing structural inequalities and exacerbating inequities for marginalized communities. These include individuals living in small island states and territories, least developed countries, indigenous people, urban poor and rural and maritime communities, people with disabilities, the LGBTQI community, ethnic minorities, the elderly, and many others. These issues are a matter of intergenerational equity and justice for the Pacific youth and for future generations, because in some way, uh, in most um, of the, the, challenge, uh, the challenges that we're facing, for instance, you know, we have uh, the, the garbage patch here in the Pacific, and, and that has been a result of pollution from some of the uh, industrialized nations. Uh, climate change is another example. Um, so, you know, while we are the least to contribute to some of these, we'll inherit and suffer the worst consequences of, of this environmental crisis. And more often, we lack um, the kind of technical resources to cope and adapt to some of the impacts. So building a just, fair, and sustainable world requires a meaningful and full participation of young people, not only in decision making, but also policy formulation, implementation of projects and programs, including the monitoring and evaluation processes, in order to address the challenges that we face uh, and understand the priorities and explore opportunities to strengthen and build resilience of our young people. So the, the next session, I believe, offers that platform and of, uh, offers that space for young people to voice their thoughts and their opinions and to uh, highlight some of the solutions that are already happening, uh, that they are leading uh, in, you know, across the individual countries, across the region, to tackle some of these challenges that I've, uh, that I've addressed. The other thing as well that I um, would like to uh, highlight is, you know, young people are change makers. They are the leaders of today. They're doing some really great and amazing work across the region. And it, you know, this, the, the breakout rooms that uh, we're going to move into 
uh, right after this, we'll provide you an opportunity to showcase some of the work that you're doing so that others may learn and be able to, you know, um, run similar initiatives in their own countries. And so I, I, I do hope that you'll provide um, that information and that resource uh, sharing uh, in, in the come upcoming breakout sessions. And uh, feel free to, to network with those who are also on this platform, on this uh, event, and uh, get, get, get and, and, and stay connected. And uh, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to, to always knock on, on doors that you, that you know would open the kind of opportunities to scale up your work. So those are just a few words from me and, and back to you, uh, Surabi Unaka. Thank you very much, Clarence, for highlighting the unique challenges that the Pacific faces along with climate change and the effects that this has on young people in the region. And yes, you're right, we will have an opportunity to discuss further in the breakout sessions. It will be a great opportunity to build coalitions and discuss these challenges in detail. But first, I would like to invite Hisaye, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, um, to take the floor. And she's our other speaker, she or he's our other speaker from Child Rights Connect. Um, handing over to you now, thank you. Thank you, and yeah, you said my name, all right. Uh, Ali, hello, good, uh, my name is Hisaye and I am from the Republic of Palau. And I have worked for the past year with CRC on many of the guideline, guidelines and for child human rights defenders. And my organization here in Palau works closely with the ocean and environment. Our name is called Air Star Oceans. And Air Star Oceans, we believe in supporting and uh, teaching youth uh, from Palau here at home the importance of the environment, and not only the environment, but protecting the ocean as well. And so here, my, um, my supporting um, organization representative, Oli Light Shilton, can like explain a little bit more about our NGO and what we do. Uh, thank you, Hisaye, Sulang and Hisaye. Uh, Ali, everyone from the Republic of Palau, my name is uh, Oli Lai Chilton, as uh, Hisaya mentioned, and I work closely with uh, Airster Oceans Palau here. Uh, and as uh, mentioned, we had recently become our own NGO here in Palau and uh, the second Airster Oceans NGO around the world. Uh, we became our, NG our own NGO in January and we're slowly uh, building up our organization. Um, we are the supporting organization for Hisaye when she was part of the Child Rights Connect. And uh, here at Air Sur Oceans, we support and teach and empower, especially empower uh, the youths in Palau and around the world uh, to become the next generation of environmental leaders. Uh, we do our best to connect and network with other environmental organizations and businesses here in Palau and around the world um, to create a great network uh, that we can share to the youths to open up uh, opportunities and activities for them to learn more about the effects on climate change and uh, solutions that uh, we can do and can solve for uh, the, uh, climate change. Uh, with that, I would like to ask Hisaye if she would like to share any of her uh, activities uh, that she has gone through here in Palau or perhaps um, uh, international activities. Uh, for Air Star Oceans, we do a annual uh, SEAL camp, it stands for Summit for Empowerment, Action and Leadership. And uh, I know Hisaye has um, taken part in that activity. so. Uh, please, uh, Hisaya, share with everyone some of the things that you have gone through with Air Star Oceans and perhaps some of the things you might have learned and you can share. Sula. Thank you, Olilai. In Air Star Oceans, um, 
there is this annual seal as Olila mentioned, Summit for Empowerment, Action and Leadership. And I attended the 2019 camp and I learned everything from the process of plastic to um, public speaking. And I was actually able to talk to several senators, me as well as youth from the Pacific and all over the world were able to talk to senators from California about a certain bill that is trying to be passed to protect the environment. And, you know, in Air Star Oceans, we learn a lot from, like I said, public speaking to just like education about plastic and um, recycling and how, you know, it can like benefit or destroy our environment. And right now in Palau, we are trying to regroup and organize our NGO and to and hopefully in the future we can host a mini seal and um, right now we are trying to work with our government officials and leaders to pass more laws that are more you know environmental uh, friendly and forward all right uh, as well as uh, some of the activities that we do here in palau we last year in december uh, we had hosted our first ever um, activity for the youth of Palau. We had called it Well, Well Day, so U-E-L, and it stands for Underwater Excursion Learning Day. And in Palau one, Well actually means turtle. So uh, with the networks that we have uh, created here in Palau, we were able to work with uh, businesses, different businesses, and um take some youths here in Palau out into the ocean and uh, observe the ocean and uh, how climate change actually has affected that. Uh, it turned out really great. A lot of the youth really enjoyed and uh, we're really glad that they learned a lot and they were able to share uh, their experience with their friends and their peers. So hopefully uh, he, here into the future, we'll be able to conduct more uh, air star oceans activities and create more network uh, and we're very excited for that so thank you thank you very much um Olila and Hesai for um explaining your work with air star oceans it sounds like a fantastic initiative for mobilizing the youth and um in the interest of time i think we'll just move on to our breakout sessions which will provide a great opportunity to discuss these initiatives, as well as the unique challenges that youth and envir youth environmental defenders face in the Pacific. So the UNEP major group for children and youth has kindly agreed to provide facilitators and note takers for this session. Many thanks to them for making this happen. And we will have three breakout rooms, which will um, cover slightly different questions so that we can um, go cover all of them in our reporting back. Um, uh, so I'd just like to read these questions out to everyone before we're divided into our breakout rooms. So the question one is, what is the major environmental issue of concern in your country? And question two is, what are some unique barriers for child and youth EHRDs in protecting and promoting the environment and human rights? Question three is how can children and youth take part in solving pressing environmental issues? Give three ways with suitable examples. Question four, how can you engage in tackling the climate crisis and environmental issues in your country? And question five, what advice would you give to your leaders to solve this problem? Welcome back everyone. And I hope you had um, really fruitful discussions in your breakout room sessions. And I think we can begin with the reporting back now. So um, we can maybe get started with group one, if the repertoire is ready. Yeah, Catherine, hi. Sure, and, and please give me a signal if I'm going on too long because it was a very rich discussion. So in question one, um, some of the highlights. Um, the question was, what is a major environmental issue of concern in your country? Um, so we had as uh, child youth leaders in um, 
a church community. Um, there was an example of doing uh, beach cleanups. There's a lot of littering going on. So uh, that's too normalized. Um, so that's an issue um, for one of our uh, participants. Another agreed with that and also said that air pollution was a concern from burning of fossil fuels, uh, for electricity, industrial activity, mining, agricultural practices, and even homes. Water um, pollution as well. And uh, a third uh, speaker um, talked about um, too much construction in residential areas and not enough um, plant life <laughs> in urban areas. Um, uh, uh, hot temperatures, lack of drinking water, air pollution again, um, this time from too much um, road traffic. Um, and the final um, speaker on the question, deforestation, agricultural practices and destructive business um, practices. On the second question, um, unique barriers for uh, children and youth um, for environmental um, rights defenders and protecting and promoting environmental and human rights. Um, the first um, comment was uh, uh, hearing children's voices, especially um, when um, voluntary child environmental um, workers, they're, they're doing their work, but they're sometimes they're not appreciated, they're not heard. Um, also, they're attempting to educate their parents when that's successful, when parents and children can have a conversation that's really helpful. Um, another speaker said in Fiji, um, it's an education issue. Many children aren't educated. They, they have environmental challenges um, that they need these um, environmental issues built into the education and training systems. They're not, they're ignorant of their basic human rights um, and, and they're uh, vulnerable to environmental degradation. Another speaker said um, lack of empowerment for children Again, education, uh, a focus on teens' issues, but that's just normal. They, they, that's just where their focus is, but it, it can be um, uh, quite a, a grabbing of their attention. Um, also, uh, children are thought to be too young and they don't understand. They don't have the mental capacity to understand, which is totally wrong. Children, um, again, need to be educated on these issues because they are the future leaders, so treat them with the respect they deserve. Um, another said, um, too many children are actually out of school and involved in child labour. Um, there's no platform where they can go for any advice. They're not taken seriously. Sometimes their poverty uh, adds to the perception that you can't really um, talk with them intelligently, but that's not true either. Um, and they're not involved in environmental action because they're in child labour um, and such. That's a big problem. Um, uh, another said, um, reinforced, yes, don't wait for university for these conversations with our young people. Start it way earlier. So we had that discussion um, um, earlier about that, um, including uh, legal actions, uh, you know, um, educate them on what they can do, practically speaking. Um, and the final one on that question talked about um, lack of respect in communities, uh, the settings about decision making in communities, either children's views are tokenistically um, received, they're not genuinely included or not included at all, and they should be. Um, and, and another issue was soil degradation, food security, um, and also the need to work in a united way. Those, uh, those are the first two questions. Do I have time just for the answer on the, the last one? Question yep. five, advice for leaders. <laughs> um, empowering children more, increase awareness, listen to children's thoughts and issues, enable them to contribute, um, add environmental issues into the curriculum, of course, um, and, and generally empower children, recognize it starts in the home, empowering children starts there. Um, and recognize environmental actions and efforts go hand in hand with children's human rights. Okay, that's it, thank you. Yeah, that sounds really good. Thank you, Catherine. Um, yeah, definitely really important issues with underestimating children, particularly in political and other decision-making. So um, anyone from breakout room two, would you like to add on to the discussion? Hi everyone, okay. Hi. my name is Dia, I'm from Malaysia. Okay. So um, breakout room two, we discussed about questions number two, number three and number five. So the first question is, what are some unique barriers for child and youth in protecting and promoting their environment and human rights? 
So um, some of the points that we discussed just now is when youth don't take things seriously, when they think this matter is like a thing that is not big enough, they tend to make it like it's not too serious and they are not, maybe they are not too experienced about this. And the next, um, this, and the next point is when some policies do not apply the youth perspective, when the policies made are not um, suitable with the youth perspective, that can be one of the challenge for child and youth to protect and promote our environment and human rights. The next question is how can children and youth take part in solving pressing environmental issues? The so first one, um, me myself as a youth, I'm 15 years old, and currently in Malaysia, we are doing a campaign called Be Dr uh, hashtag Be Drastic Say No to Plastics, where we ban single-use plastics, and we are still promoting. And as a youth myself, what we do is spread awareness via social media. And not just um, social media, we can promote it in um, television, in the newspaper, um, and that's where we can spread awareness to everyone. And next, we can engage more participation in environment program. We can invite more public to um, include themselves in the environment program. And we can also put more activists in the media, more activists to um, protest, to um, give their thoughts and share their thoughts about um, some topic in the media. And after, um, more points that we have is also campaigning or doing petition. As we know, petition is really easy to make. It's online and um, it's a way that we can ask agreement for agreement in the public. And lastly is the innovation and social enterprise to address specific problems such as risk management issues. So we have innovation and social enterprise to address specific problems uh, and solve it uh, in a better way. And for the last question is, what advice would you give to your leaders to solve this problem? So what we would say to our leaders is, they need to give real contributions. They need to be passionate about it. They, don't, uh, they can't just talk about it, but they have to act it out. So you know, action speaks louder than words. So, leaders must take actions in everything they say they must make it as a thing that they they thought and they act it out not just talk is like um just talk for like in the tv but they have to be passionate about it and they have to take action about it and then they also have to support the local event so um in the country you must have like events regarding the environment, human rights, so they have to support it and also increase funding opportunities for youth to take part in our environmental issues. So that's all from breakout to uh, discussion from the breakout group. Thank you. Thank you for summarizing um, the concrete points and summarizing so concisely as well what was discussed and I think there's a lot of overlap between the breakout rooms which is great because it just shows that we know what to do but youth voices just need to be heard and taken into account and um, anyone from break um, I think Georgie from breakout three yeah? Sorry, yeah. thank you <laughs> thank yeah. you Surabi. Um, so for group three uh, we discussed questions three four and five um, so starting from group three, um, which really uh, looked at how youth can be involved, uh, there were some great suggestions about the importance of recognition that, that children uh, learn about the environment from a very early age, that education is fundamental to mobilize youth. Um, but also there are important cultural elements to this and that um, we need to understand how our understanding of the environment is also very culturally uh, linked. Um, it, there was also similar to group one, there was discussion around how children are at their really formative stages and understanding about the environment, learning um, through environmental education is critical. 
There were some great examples of um, recycling programs that are done in communities and villages, um, and also how these uh, recycling programs are also done through schools as great ways to involve children in uh, environmental issues and getting them start uh, to be aware of the impacts of the environment, but also ways that it can be addressed. Um, there was also great examples of uh, the importance of children being able to do research and sharing this research with leaders. Uh, there was an example from Palau of how um, children through advocacy on plastics uh, was able to eventually result in a plastic bag ban um, that has been done through Palau. And finally, a key point was how children can innovate and can address environmental issues through business opportunities. And again, there was a really great example of um, a youth who identified the impact of sunscreen on coral reefs in the Pacific. And this led to a business opportunity for reef safe sun sunscreen uh, that has become really popular. Uh, moving on to question four, which is how you can further engage in tackling um, climate crisis and environmental issues. Um, one, again, it was really important that um, children are involved in advocacy with government leaders and pushing leaders to introduce bills that are important for the environment. Uh, there was also recognition that in the Pacific, there is already an understanding and a certain level of political will to tackle climate change because of the recognition of the close interlinkages between the environment and, and our well-being. Uh, again, it was also raised about the importance of education, awareness, and, and talking with government leaders uh, to, to advocate for them to take action. Um, as with group two, we also discuss the power of social media uh, and not just social media, but also um, other forms of uh, awareness we see through podcasts, through newspapers, through magazines, um, but that social media can really amplify voices and, and be a very important tool for youth to be engaged. Finally, on, on question five, on what advice would you give our leaders? There were some amazing pieces of advice. We sort of took it as though if you had five minutes with your leader, what would you say in five minutes? And uh, two quotes were shared that I want to echo. The first quote was, to lead the people is to walk beside them. And, and this really spoke to the importance of listening to the people, of understanding the, what, what their needs are, what, their, um, what the impacts on people are, and, and to involve people and to really walk beside people in problem solving. The second qu uh, quote was, you will become the leader that you follow. And with this, it was really important for, for leaders to understand the responsibility that they hold to look after citizens um, and that they have a moral as well as uh, you know, all, all forms of, of responsibility to ensure that they address the climate crisis and the environmental crises. The third piece of advice for leaders is go outdoors more, experience the environment, enjoy the environment, go fishing, uh, exercise in the environment, um, understand the impacts of, of climate change firsthand on the community, spend as much time uh, in the outdoors as possible, which I think was really fantastic advice. Uh, and the fourth piece of advice um, for leaders was to understand how environmental degradation impacts basic human rights. It impacts our health, safety, education, really fundamental rights that we have. And that it's really important for government to understand uh, and, and indeed, uh, you know, it, it, we was discussed that this is obvious, uh, and yet it, it still seems to be um, not a priority that environmental degradation impacts our very basic and fundamental human rights. Uh, so thank you very much, Surabi. Back to you. Thank you so much, Georgie, um, for that summary. And um, thank you, Catherine and Thea, as well.
um, just for summarizing so fantastically everything that was discussed in your breakout rooms. Um, it's great to hear the fruitful discussions that highlighted um, how important it is to take youth voices um, into account in political decision making and otherwise as well in the media and through education as well. Um, we, there were some fantastic ideas such as through social media and enterprises, technology and innovation that could all be easily implemented if just given the opportunity. So we'll end our discussion here today and thank you everyone so much for joining. It was um, really great to hear all of your thoughts and I really hope that you had the opportunity to connect with other like-minded activists from the region. Um,